I just wanted to take a moment to kind of explain in a more casual venue why I do what I do because I have patients that come in all the time and ask me how did you fall into this and I, well I didn't really fall into it I guess I backed into it would be a better way to say that so I trained in medical school and did a traditional residency program in Decatur, Illinois, as a matter of fact. When I was finishing my residency, I had planned to go out and do um, a family medicine practice, um, like every physician after their training wants to set up their practice. Um, then the medical school came to me and said, hey, we need some faculty at the residency program. So this would be the residency program where I trained. Um, we have a new director coming in. He needs a faculty person to help out in addition to what was available. And I thought, well, it doesn't require anything more on my part other than walking in and starting the job. Turned into something that I spent 15 years of my career doing, including delivering babies or doing obstetrics for 15 years. And I loved what I did because it provided not only patient care, but it provided teaching. And that's really what doctor means is docere or teacher, um, if you look at the Latin root. And that's really what I value as a physician is to be able to educate people and help them understand what's going on with their health and their body because most people don't understand those things, um, which is unfortunate. And so I see my mission to help educate people so they understand what's going on. I've learned a lot of things from my patients and along the way people have challenged me, both my patients and the staff in the hospital. And I remember one day when I was in uh, practice at the residency program, one of my 89 year old patients came in and asked me about a supplement. Now mind you, this was many years before just when America was starting to be introduced to using nutritional supplements. And he, at 89, was taking some supplements and he had some medication. He came in with a new supplement and he said, will this work for me to get off my blood pressure medicine because it's causing some problems in my health that I don't like? And I said, I don't know because I know nothing about this supplement. And he said, well, doc, you should learn about these things. Okay, uh, so I went out and started to learn about those things. The problem is there wasn't a lot of information available back then. Because I speak German, I actually ordered the German uh, Commission e-reports on natural supplements and I started reading all about nutritional supplements and I started looking at other alternative treatment methods with that and started to implement some of those and curiously people started to get better we started to get them off some medications. Whenever you try to do things that are different or unusual in a traditional system, it raises questions. Um, and of course, being faculty member, I was employed by the medical school and I got an invitation to go visit the dean who asked me why I was doing these non-traditional treatments in my practice. And I explained to him uh, that people are actually getting better with this and I told him the same thing. I was challenged by a patient. So I decided to investigate those and I was having success with that. And I told them, you know, they've always uh, encouraged us to do research uh, to further education and help people understand more about their own health and their lives. And so I said, I'd like to set up a study to look at what I've been doing and what we do with traditional medication. And he very flatly told me, we can't do that. And I, I didn't understand and he said, who do you think we get the majority of our research from? Well, that would be the pharmaceutical industry that pays for the research that they do. But they wouldn't pay for research that I wanted to do because he said, what happens if your method works better than their method? What, what are they going to do with that data? And at that point, I, the light bulb kind of went on that maybe I didn't fit. I was kind of a square peg in a round hole sort of guy at the residency program. <clears throat> Along the way, some other things happened. Uh, the Women's Health Initiative study came out um, where they determined that traditional prescription hormone replacement was increasing the risk for cancers in women and dementia in women, and those were not desirable things. So some of those um, medications were pulled from the market. And all of a sudden, I had a lot of unhappy women patients because I did OB. Uh, they were flashy, sweaty, irritable, and of course, their spouses didn't like that. And so I started to get feedback from this. And one day, a patient came in and again challenged me, hey, doc, I need a refill for this prescription from a compounding pharmacy. I didn't know anything about a compounding pharmacy. And so I looked at the prescription. I thought, well, I'm going to call the pharmacist and talk to them. So I did, and the pharmacist started explaining this to me and he said, hey, there's actually a meeting coming up, would you like to go? Okay, and so I booked a trip and away I went and started learning about non-traditional hormone treatment. 
And again, the light bulb went on and I thought, wow, this is a way I can help my people and we're actually using bioidentical hormones, which means the same hormones their body would produce. And it doesn't cause side effects if the things are monitored appropriately and levels measured, which makes perfect sense to me. So we started doing that in practice um, and people started getting better and lived happier lives, which was great. Another step along the way, <clears throat> my mom, uh, who was 88, started to show signs of dementia. And I didn't have any tools to help her. We tried traditional prescription medications that caused side effects. She actually fell out of bed, um, broke a vertebrae, which required uh, treatment and pain control. And that's when I decided I needed to learn more about what can I do to help people with these very difficult situations that were often told these are not fixable and these are terminal, if you will. And I started studying uh, about alternatives and that's kind of what drove me to go back and unlearn what I've learned and to learn new and different tools. And so that's what I did. I started studying. Um, I started studying in the evenings. I went away for courses to uh, get more in-depth construction or instruction. I had to learn about completely new things uh, to me uh, that just blew my mind, literally, because there were people out there that were helping people improve beyond anything I could imagine as a traditional physician. And the beauty of that is, as I learned about those things, um, that I started to implement those. So here I was living two lives. I was seeing patients in the office, implementing these things, studying in the evening, going away for courses, all of which I spent my own money and time to do. And at some point that transition came up and I decided I can't do traditional medicine anymore in and of itself and decided to move into what we call the integrative or functional medicine model where we actually learn to understand exactly what's going on with the patient so we can help them um, heal on their own as God intended our body to do. And the transformation I started seeing with patients was just so gratifying when we actually figured out what the root cause of their problem was, they started moving forward. And the frustrating thing, I guess, in hindsight was I didn't learn about it sooner because I couldn't help my own mom. And we went through the traditional stages of Alzheimer's and mom passed away before I actually had the knowledge to help her. And so that's the biggest thing probably that spurned me, but there were multiple things along the path that spurned that. And then ultimately my own health issues. So we kind of weave all these pieces into our lives and those all change us and make us who we are today. And that's why I like to spend an hour with new patients to understand where did they come from? What was their pregnancy like when their mom was carrying them? What happened as they're growing up? What infections did they have? How did they eat? How did they live? Uh, what stressors did they have in their lives? And all of those make us who we are today. And so my own health issues played into this. Um, I grew up in a German household. Mom always cooked food fresh. We hardly ever ate processed foods. And I was a healthy guy until I, maybe a little chubby, but went away to college and started eating processed foods. And I started having health issues. So I'd go to a, a you know, doctor uh, in the community and he would tell me, oh, you have irritable bowel syndrome. Well, okay, that makes sense because I was stressed and studying and away from home and all those things. They would be me pills to take it. Well, most of those didn't work. They just made me sleepy, which was not good for studying. And so I abandoned that and just kind of struggled through with those things. But I knew there were foods that I ate that caused problems, but I couldn't put my thumb on what it was. Uh, and it was so frustrating to be told it's just irritable bowel and I knew there was more there but I didn't have the education at that point to figure it out and that light bulb didn't go on until about 2006 when I started my retraining and I figured out what some of the underlying causes were and it was dietary literally um, and that's now how we help people get back to optimal function and health the majority of it is diet and lifestyle we can use some supplements to augment that. A lot of times we're so depleted in nutrients because of our, uh, what I call the SAD diet or the standard American diet, uh, because of all the ultra processing and, and replacing those nutrients, uh, helping people understand the importance of sleep and de-stressing. Uh, simple things uh, like kicking your shoes off and walking around in the grass barefoot, which we call grounding or earthing, helps our body de-stress. And it's a natural thing that all of us can do. It costs absolutely nothing. 
Um, but all those things were important um, to help me regain my health. And so I think every physician that does alternative or integrative treatment or functional medicine has their own health history, their own journey. Um, and once you understand that and you regain your own health, you become passionate about helping other people do that also. Finding the key. What's that key that makes the whole thing better? And that's the fun part of this. Once you help people understand the key, put that plan together, and you see them blossom and return to living their best life, that's the gratifying part of why I do what I do. Never worried about money. It takes care of itself. You do a good job for people, and they will come and you know no different than they said in the movies um, and so it's just been so gratifying first best word of advertising is just what people tell their family and friends go see him he can help you out and, and that's the beauty of this is you know if you do a good job for people everything else takes care of itself so that's where I'm at that's why I do uh, if you want more information ask me but if I can help you on your health journey to help you understand what's going on with your health to find the key, to find the root cause, let me know. Give us a call.